pack your bags. We're going back to Bangkok. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not finished with you yet, China. You rejoin me and my wife Kitty on a Chinese bullet train, and even though we sped along at a whopping 305 kilometers an hour, I was kind of bored. So I went over to explore the first class section, and I can certainly see why it was nearly twice the price of our regular tickets. I found this door which said toilet on it, and thankfully, inside was our hotel room for the next few days. Pretty standard room, but check out this incredible view. Welcome everyone to China, episode 2, the stunning city of Hanzuu. Hong Zhao Hu? Ha, no. Insert the bloody title card. Hoya, morgen. Oh wait, that's Dutch. I don't know languages. Me and the wife up super early and what better way to start your day than one of these giant wafer filled pancake rolly things before heading to one of the most famous lakes in Hangzhou. As you can see, something awesome was happening. A lot of mega expensive high quality equipment on display. So when I pulled out my iPhone to join in, a few of them laughed at me. They told my wife that some of them had been here for over three hours aiming to capture a bird grabbing a fish out of the water. <laughs> so I decided to show them a secret application I had on my phone, Google Images. For some reason, no one knew what that was. We pressed on into the park to get a Costa Coffee coconut and having already drank a cheese coffee early in the trip, it really just proves that regardless of race, culture or creed, we're all just the same really. Surrendering our lives, money, and free will to evil dictators who don't even let us complain about them. Those bloody coffee shop corporations. Phew. Thankfully, it was a work day, so there wasn't many people here. Absolutely not many people here at all. However, I did see a group of school kids, and having been famous just a few days earlier up north, oh, I decided to walk over to them before quickly realizing that I was a fat old man trying to get kids in a park to acknowledge me. All just to try and fill, I guess, the crippling loneliness in my heart. <sighs> so instead, I got the next best thing a beer! Oh my god, I'm hungry. The only issue is, in China, they give you these little sticks for chopping. I'm not quite sure what they're called, but I always seem to struggle with them, so I opted for a KFC ice cream shop. After a super long day, we headed back to our hotel and the toilet of the future. In the UK, we have but one moving handle to press, yet here, there are 18 different buttons on a remote control. Let me just repeat that for you. 18 different things this toilet can do on a controller remotely. We got a bit fed up by all the crowd, so we come out to this lake so we can spend a little bit more time together, uh, do some shopping, some eating, and hopefully some sailing. Now I know what you're thinking. Walker, you lovable flump, you've already shown us a park with Lake Combo. You absolutely suck at YouTubing. Well, I respectfully disagree with you there, because me showcasing multiple lakes with parks have absolutely nothing to do with how much I suck at YouTube. Because this park, uh, yes, with a lake, also has some of these. Of course, long-term fans of the channel will know just how much bikes hate me, so I was hoping that things in China would be different. Well, spoiler alert, they was not. So, right, yeah, cash, at least where we were, isn't really a thing, and thus everything is paid for on your phone, providing you have a working Chinese SIM card. And guess who doesn't have a working Chinese SIM card right now? <sighs> Kitty had scanned her phone to get her bike, and then when she tried to scan for mine, it said, nope, you can't possibly ride two bikes at the same time. Run, fat boy, run. Still winning. As Kitty enjoys the benefits of having a bike, I ran, stopping only to find out this. No, it's, it's a, a fat, super fat kind of. Well, that makes me want to cry and do this run even more. So thanks, thanks, China. I already knew I was fat, so it's not really a surprise, is it? We both know pain, but we deal it too. Or who's dealt more? Well, I leave that up to you. This is so easy. 
After a few hours of running to get to this canoe place, we decided it was too busy and did something else, which gives me the opportunity to share with you all a walk of first, some actual research information. If we back up one week, you would have found us at the stunning city of Anyang, the city where my wife is from at this light festival. This city was actively trying to promote itself as a cultural destination, so I thought I'd help. During the Shang Dynasty between 1600 and 1046 BC, they had found some oracle bones, scratches if you will, on the back of this turtle. These scratches would later go on to form the origins of the Chinese characters that they use today. Here you can see some of these letters inside these lights. Incidentally, during my research, I accidentally discovered the origins of the Thai written language. When some old archaeologist dropped some wet spaghetti on the floor and said, Fuck it. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to Hongzhou and some women drivers. Whoa, slow down there, speedy. But to be fair, I wasn't much better, although I was going for an Austin Powers type joke here. Time to get some more comments. In my last episode, lots of you had said that I was really too nice towards China. And well, maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong, but I'll say once again, I treat people as I wish to be treated. Politics, religion, dietary requirements, what gender you've decided to be today. Honestly, I couldn't care less. What I do care about, however, is Americans using the phrase I could care less to mean the exact same thing, which is, which is just maddening. Right, back to the actual, uh, dare I say, plot. On our final date, we headed out to do some shopping and stumbled on this super cool cat slash shopping street. Then we headed towards the science district. Now I'm fully aware that YouTube audiences and science audiences don't usually mix, so I'll give myself the chance to do a quick T-Rex transition to show you the game I play when I'm bored of these absolutely classic faces. Now I'll get the hell out of here as quickly as I can. You may have seen these three little idiots dotted around the place and that's because Honjo proudly hosted the Asian games a few years ago which just goes to show how technologically advanced the city is. So advanced, in fact, oh, check this out. Right, so our hotel, our coffee hotel, had these little delivery robots. You can order your food as per usual and a delivery driver, of course, will bring the food to reception. Now, that might be good enough for Thailand, but oh, wow, these little robots will now carry your food from the hotel door, call the lift, get in the lift, travel to your floor, and then ring your doorbell. They'll also probably murder you at some point in the next five years, but for now, fantastic. China 2, Thailand nil. <laughs> Before we head off, uh, again, what else can I say about this country? If we put all the bad jokes, politics, and general bollocks opinions that most people have without ever visiting a place aside, a truly standout moment for me, I was sitting on a street corner with my hood up at midnight and a little old lady with broken English stopped and asked me if I was okay. Of course, I was fine. Kitty was buying some wine in the shop behind me, but still, I'm 40 years old and I don't think a stranger has ever asked me if I was doing okay before. So for that moment, it truly means something to me and I'm thankful. Thanks for allowing me to share this experience with you. There's a lot more crazy stuff coming up this year. Love overflow, I'm there.